Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Just a heads up on this one, I will not be having the mini-map that I usually have in any of the post-editing because I do not have the time to do it tonight and I really want to get a cast out to you guys. I will have the higher quality processing in the 60 frames per second, but the other stuff is out and if you want to know the reason why I don't have time, uh, check the vlogs section or recent uploads and watch the check-in that I posted and I talk about everything that's going on in my life there. But for you loyal viewers, I do want to get a cast out today, so I am going to dive straight into this one. It is a game on Lost Paradise 4, and it is an odd one. I've casted one of these before, and I'm going to go ahead and explain real quick how it works, just because I haven't done it in some time, and we will hopefully get to enjoy this, because it should be really interesting. Um, this is apparently... A one versus one, but in reality, it is a two versus two with one ACU per team. And how this is played is there you you go in with uh, cheats on, and one of the pair deletes their ACUs, and you view the game through your teammates' point of view. So you can see here if I click on V. V has that point of view, and Brian, who is on his team, also has that point of view. He is looking at it through the uh, player select in the cheat menu. And with these games, usually the two people are going to be on voice chat who are playing together so they can coordinate better. And um, it is an honor system that you're not screen peeking because with cheats on, obviously you can turn off the fog of war and see everything. And you'll see down at the bottom here, cheating menu. That scrolling past is just the players issuing orders on units that are not technically there. So both players can control the units on the map. V and Brian in this case, and then on the northern side, Softly and Bartok. So this is a relatively closely matched game. 2k player on both teams and a 1500 on both teams. Usually what these guys will do, it, it allows for a lot of extra micro time. Um, so manual reclaim is huge and you'll see a lot of, uh, let me get to Softly's view. I think I can't see the move orders. The last one that I did, you could see, uh, one player was laying down hundreds of manual reclaim orders to bring in as much mass as possible, as quickly as possible. And the other player was kind of taking control of the units. And then as the game progressed, they kind of split the map in half and one was controlling the top half and one was controlling the bottom half. And it allows you to have a screaming high APM and two people watching the screen instead of one, but you have one ACU to guard. It is assassination and if you lose that commander, it is game over for the whole team. All right, enough explanation. That was like two and a half minutes of explanation and I think everybody gets it and I've beaten that horse to death so let's go ahead and dissect some gameplay because things are starting to happen. I have never actually casted this map before or played on this map before. I'm seeing some large boulders here and there for reclaim, a great deal of mass extractors. There are a lot of mass extractors here but this is a fairly large map. This is a 10k I believe effective landmass in the center here so it's fairly large. And we are seeing a little bit of aggression here. We've got a bomber out from Softly, of course, in this case as well. One person's going to be able to micro the bomber, and the other person's going to be able to keep maintaining base operations. So that does allow you to do a lot more things at once. We have a tank and a scout on the southern side, but that is going to be countered by a striker. And looks like a decent expansion to the north there. Got a second bomber here. That first bomber was immediately knocked down by some interceptors. And the second bomber is going to head towards the southern side. But as soon as it shows itself, or this scout flies past it, uh, that will get nailed and not have an opportunity to do anything. But there is a hero Tham killing off that expansion here, even though the striker bypassed it completely. That's pretty cool. Got a drop going down in the back here. Uh, Team V is going to claim its expansion in the back. Lots of reclaim. Well, two reclaim boulders there. And a lot of mass extractors. So definitely need to snag that ASAP. We got a bomber coming in to kill off that engineer over there. And tanks moving towards the northern side. But there is a factory down. So that means production is close by. Tanks will come to the rescue. And everything should be perfectly fine. 
This bomber is actually doing more than I thought it would. It has two kills under its belt, and interceptors have not knocked it down because there is a tentative air engagement in progress up here. It looks like Softly has gone for a lot heavier air than V has, and I'm just going to refer to the teams by the primary players' names. I'm not going to try to keep track of which one is actually issuing the orders. Um, Softly has two additional bombers, so a total of three in the air, and definitely, decisively has air control. He has over twice as many before that engagement, now has all the interceptors, and he is going to be able to snag that transport and still have enough interceptors to gain air superiority. So nicely done there. V did get a drop off right here, gonna build these two mass extractors and build a point defense but not able to snag both expansions. We've got a string of units here, but Softly is going to have the grouping advantage. So that is going to be a loss for V, no progress there. And then on the southern side, air, anti-air emplacements were not put down yet, and there are no interceptors. So these three bombers and scout down here are going to be able to wreck that expansion and wrench it from the hands of holy cow my phone i forgot to silence that drat i do apologize people it is now off you got a drop moving to the back here this is something interesting i'm going to pose a theoretical here i was not viewing the exact economy statistics but i think not pushing out the transport let softly put more interceptors out and bombers out which allowed him to gain air control and that let him do all of this mess and I think he's actually going to come out ahead in the long run for postponing his drop till later now one thing I am seeing is that V is bringing more factories online V has three and a fourth going down Whereas Softly only has a single lonely land factory over there and is ramping up production in his base. Already has an Ilshiva out, which the mass incomes are going up quite drastically because there is a huge amount of mass, con mass extractors under the control of one player. And uh, for now, I think V is going to have a tank number advantage because of the production advantage. But there we go, Tech 2 Factory Online. Once the Ilshivas start flowing to this corner, the tech level will easily bring softly to the forefront. And those are some very brave tanks in the back there. I am incredibly surprised that those bypassed everything and got into the back. That is actually pretty cool. Going to kill off that mass extractor there and potentially keep running around away from those tanks but no that was actually probably a drop we have a mobile artillery right here which is wailing away on that mass extractor I'm going to go ahead and assume that was a drop because I no longer see the transport to drop this stuff so that probably transported some units around this side and I totally missed it while I was commenting on something else got a transport moving out for V right here that is engineers just speeding up his expansion. When you have a map this size and you have transports on call, it is always a good idea to go ahead and use your transports to drop engineers around just so that you can get things online faster. And then this group of tanks down here is doing a respectable amount of damage, but they are currently pinned between a group of strikers, or pillars, my bad, pillars, and the ACU, so I think their rampage is going to be at an end here shortly. Not a whole lot left they can do right there, and why? Dropping engineers and immediately building a factory that Zooey is going to get a hilarious amount of kills. It just keeps going and going. It is the energizer of Zooey's. Ilshiva is teaming up in the north. There is now enough up here that I don't think V will be able to push anytime soon, although there are a respectable amount of pillars moving in that direction. So we'll just have to kind of see how that goes, and Zooey's just kind of hanging out, going to put some damage down on that pillar, but not a whole lot. Let's see how many kills are on this thing. There are 11 kills 
on that Zooey. I am genuinely impressed by that. I don't think I have ever seen a T1 artillery with that many kills that has survived this long. It is a four vet artillery that is about to be a five vet. When was the last time you saw that? <laughs> Great deal. Interceptor advantage is not there anymore for Softly. I was about to comment on it, but it looks like there is a huge swarm of interceptors up on the northern side between this gunship and this mass of pillars, V is going to make a little bit of progress. The problem is, with that group of Ilshivas, I think Softly will come out on top. And yes, it does look like he is doing so. And Softly is also going to win air. So that's going to dump a huge pile of reclaim over here, right within easy reach of Softly. And that is going to give him an even greater advantage. Softly currently has 40... 100 reclaim v has 43 but i think the advantage is going to quickly tip in softly's favor and what is it ah <laughs> dropped a pillar down here and finally killed that zooey and there's a zooey here with five kills that are just kind of hanging out in the middle of all of the units passing by around here and still killing things and not dying. I don't know what it is with Zooey's, but it appears that Softly has discovered the secret to the immortal Zooey. And uh, I do hope that he shares it with everyone because I could definitely use this awesome tool. I think this, uh, this Zooey is actually about to get another engineer kill. That is quite ridiculous. Softly has got to be... Uh, no, only two are out of fuel. I thought they were moving a little slow earlier, but apparently they are okay. Got gunships on the northern side. There's a Tech 2 factory over here. All you got to do is build one flak, but there is nothing building there. I think that, uh, yeah, there we go. He's noticed it. Interceptor's moving up there, but for some reason, all the interceptors are running that direction. And we have two gunships here and two gunships here. So, need to split forces, bro. There we go right there it is happening there are two people controlling the units and somehow things are still slipping through not sure how that's possible but oh well got tech 3 air online for v v has 6.2k power income with no t3 generator so i think we can safely assume that he has ras and well are there no there are not okay and on the northern side i am pretty sure that softly does as well because he has no additional power generators at all and has 6k 9k power income that is actually impossible ah there we go t2 gens around the outside edge that i am actually looking at and i'm not seeing there's a strap bomber out along with a group of four asf that is going to allow v to put a severe hurting on this cloud of interceptors, although the interceptors will win in that great of a quantity, especially with the help of these ASF that are just now popping up. Strap Bomber trying to kill off as much eco and build power as it possibly can before it dies, going to bomb in on those engineers. Excellent, excellent work. A lot of kills on that one. The UEF Bomber does have a good amount of area of effect. It is second most or no, third most, it is Cybern, Seraphim, UEF, Aeon in order of most to least area of effect. V has finally built up a critical mass of pillars. Those are going to be able to break the Zooey lines right in time for an Awesome to show up. And I think they might actually kill the awful Awesome as well. Awesome's uh, probably going to have a bit of an issue on this map because there are some terrain irregularities of a great sort. So you're going to have to watch your firing patterns and your angle of attack. An answering strap bomber out for softly. That is going to kind of hover around and not really accomplish anything and then move in that there direction. So not sure what's going on there. Apparently that was a failed hover bomb. Ilshiva's in mass moving around the southern side but there are some tech two point defense online they are going to be able to kill a few of these as they're passing but this percival is going to do wonders bam one shot killing the pre-damaged ilshivas percy's are a beautiful thing to watch at work still some aggression going on up here 
Is that a second Otham? It may very well be. I think it is. Yes, there are two Othams up here. And that one is going to go down between the Othams and the Strap Bomber. Those pillars are going to be dealt with, but not before they wipe out this expansion up here. That is going to give V the advantage in map control and eco. So, just going to have to see how this plays out. The only thing that is going to help out softly is if he manages to kill all of this stuff and get the reclaim. But at the moment, this Percival is moving up and another group of strikers. So, I think V is going to be pushing up the tech level here. Yes, right here we've got upgrades going down on those Tech 2 support factories. Going to have Tech 3 support factories rolling. That's going to allow a lot more Percivals on the field. And with V's quite significant eco advantage, that is going to be horrifically bad news for Softly. Softly's going to have to come up with a creative solution to this mess. Otherwise, he is going to get left behind by the superior UEF Tech 3 units. Um... About the only thing he's going to be able to do is to expand on his already sizable air advantage. And other than that, it's basically down to microing sniper bots and shields. Because on this terrain especially, but generally speaking in any, um, in any confrontation, the Othams are just going to lose to Percival's. They just plain lose. You can't help it. The Percival's alpha damage and the superior range is just too much of an advantage over the Otham. The Otham does not have enough speed to make up the range difference. And all of those bombers and the strats and everything else up there just got cleanly picked off while the ASF were occupied elsewhere. Well, not really occupied, but there are three strat bombers down here, which are all going to bomb a Tech 1 Max. I guarantee you that that Tech 1 Max is obliterated from the face of planet Earth as well as that one. That is roughly equivalent to swatting a gnat with a 10 pound sledgehammer. I don't know why all of those bombs were dropped on that single target, but dropped they were. You got strats coming down on these Percivals when they're nicely clumped up like that. You can say thank you, thank you for putting them all together in one spot. I'm going to deal splash damage. Looks like air, V is catching up on air mostly through superior management. Um, that was not a good turn right there though. As soon as I said that, apparently I cursed him to failure. And yes, Softly is going to maintain air control. That could have been a very hard win for V if that had been pursued correctly, but it was not sadly. Softly building a power generator and a shield, trying to get some extra resources online. V still having such a tremendous eco advantage. Almost a hundred mass income over top of what Softly has. And looks like got two Tech 3, three Tech 3 factories, four Tech 3 factories building air and starting to bring these Percivals online. There's now a sizable clump of Percivals over here that is going to easily be able to wipe out the Othams unless these Strap Bombers keep dropping because those do damage entire clumps of Percivals. The Othams are cheaper so even though the numbers look about the same here, mass for mass, there are a whole lot more uh, Percivals here than Othams if you look at the cost or the value of the unit. Gunships still pressing around on the map. V taking great advantage of raiding. He is poking and prodding around the outside edges and doing a lot of things right. But on the southern side, we do have a push. There are quite a few Othams. Looks like about 15 to me. Nope. Well, this clump back here. There's probably about 15 on the front. Yes. And... Those are going to wreck the production down here, but transports, hello, Percivals. Once again, utilizing the transports to get units where they need to be much more quickly than they could have on foot. Percivals up here mopping up those Othams easily with a bit of kiting, just like predicted. And that is going to leave a nice, tidy little lump of reclaim there for V to pick up. 
and these Percivals could have made a huge difference versus this group of Othams, but they were dropped and just started chillaxing, so this group is going to go ahead and move up and kill some more Mass Extractors. Another T3 going down and a Percival. Percival's trying to chase those things down. They will start laying down some damage here. T1 Bombers coming in. Once again, obliterating the ever-living hell out of a single Mass Extractor with about three times the damage required to kill it. Softly and teammate, who is Bartok, you got two people running a one versus one, you should have enough APM to reach over and hold down the shift key and click G so that you can attack three or four targets at the same time because there is so much potential damage in these bombers that you're throwing at the other team, but it's all going onto a single target. It could have done so much more. Handy dandy chicken running around the outside edge. Hopefully he'll be able to take out a mass extractor or three before he gets shot down. I predict he will go down to gunships. Yes, they are already moving. And finally, these Percivals are going to be in the right spot to deal with a group of Othams. But right up here, there is a group of Othams dangerously close to that ACU. V needs to do something immediately, something resembling an overcharge, preferably. Those Percivals are going to keep wailing away on those, but uh, there are enough Othams there to kill those two Percivals. They will go down, and there are Ilshivas still here. That is going to be a dead nuke defense, I think. Uh, maybe, if he focus fires, or he could just let his units die. Ah, there we go. Last Otham alive is going to take the nuke defense. Very nicely done, but I don't know that there is a nuke. If I were going to build a nuke, I would build it in the back where the other guy would have a harder time scouting it. But that is just me, and I don't see a nuke anywhere. But nuke defense being dead is not a bad thing. It buys you some more time before he has one loaded. And it looks like he is not rebuilding it as of yet, so that uh, window of opportunity is going to stay open for at least a little while. More T1 bombers moving down. Uh, Seraphim T1 bombers are actually pretty epic. If you're hitting single targets, they do very good damage. and uh, Or stationary targets, I should say, not single targets. And they have a decently respectable amount of area of effect. So you can lay down a whole lot of damage very quickly with groups of them. Just bring in the entire swarm and lay waste to the land. Looks like V is finally getting some air in line that is capable of taking softly. We got just over 60 versus 73. So catching up there. Um, a little bit more production and possibly V will be able to snag air control, which would greatly help him. Although with the Percivals finally reclaiming the territory that he lost to those Othams, he is going to be pretty securely in control of the land masses. I just now noticed that this map actually has no central access. All of the land units must run around the outside edge because this terrain in the center here is completely impassable. Kind of an odd map design really. I think there should be more drops. That would make me a happy camper. We could watch exciting drops from unexpected areas instead of watching avenues of attack in narrow choke points. Percivals are just going to kind of chill out here. I think there are enough Percivals that with some good micro they could kill all of these Othams, but they're just going to be content to chill out. And then on the northern side, I think there are enough Othams that they can actually run over this group of Percivals. We'll have to see how this plays out. Othams actually have the most damage per mass of the Tech 3 Heavy Assault Bots um, out of the Harbinger, uh, Percival, Brick, and I'm forgetting the second one, or the, the fourth one, Otham. My brain is tired. I do apologize, people. Having a little trouble being innovative at the moment. <laughs> uh... So many Tech 3 units. I am completely amazed that there has not been a Tech 4 unit yet. I think what would be hysterical is if Softly were to build a 
and Awasa. Ah, there is a nuke launcher. Just came online, beginning loading there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the southern side. That nuke defense is already about halfway loaded, right at the 40% mark and f a fair bit of assistance on it. So there is no way that Softly is going to be able to land a nuke before that thing is loaded. And Awasa would be a decent mass investment actually because the way all of these units are packed in, the Awasa could pay for itself in two bombs by killing off T3 units. If it could land a bomb there and survive if uh, Softly were able to secure air control before the Awasa was dead and it could land a second bomb on another group of Tech 3 units, something like this or this, I'm pretty sure that would actually be the mass cost of the Owasa, and after that you would be ahead. It would be a very useful tool. Not to mention the fact that if you were able to wipe out a chunk of units this sized, you could push your own T3 units in and kill all of the production and all of the mass extractors in the back there quite easily. And here we see a nice... I was not expecting that. Um, I think part of this is due to the fact that the Percivals were not kiting properly, but those Awa the group of Awa uh, the group of Othams, that is so hard to pronounce, I did not expect that to be a tongue twister. And V wins air. And V wins air hard. That is going to be the end of the hopes and dreams of air control for Softly and company. Holy cow. V is going to be able to do basically whatever he wants now. That was probably Brian in control of the air. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen V play T3 dedicated air. I don't know how his micro is, but he is a very, very good player, so I am sure that it is not bad at all. And here we see a push from Percival's that has easily wiped out all of the Othams that were in its path. There's a sniper bot running up from the rear and some more units trickling in, but there is no way that Softly is going to be, get, be able to get enough units online in time to prevent a significant amount of damage from happening here. There's also a tack launcher here. Kind of a nice little touch. Adding insult to injury. You know what? I'm already overrunning your entire world with Percivals, but hey, let's throw some tacks into the mix because there's never enough destruction. And more sniper bots coming online. You can see it's starting to be a little more sniper heavy. Softly is not relying entirely on Othams anymore. He has realized that snipers are going to help his situation. And he is building some of them right now. You can see they are laying down the hurt on that Percival there. I'm going to kill it and chillax. Possibly move on to other targets. Some more T3 air was built by Softly. He has a lot of power on that production. And of course we've got the extra factories up here that are also producing air units, but V just has such a huge, tremendous lead at the moment that it's gonna be really hard to overcome that. Strap bombers ganging up on the southern side. There are four of them or five? Five of them. There were two overlapping there. They're going to kind of hang out to the right and Percival's beginning to move into the base. This is not looking good at all. UEF is showing its late game strength with its T3 bots. The Percival's just pull the face off of everything. Just carnage in every direction once you get a mass of them this large. Although that is a very huge bank of Tech 2 point defense. I am completely amazed. That may actually be able to deny the Percivals. Softly has built 24 Tech 2 point defense. Is it going to be enough? That is the question. And trying to see what else is going on around the map. This is not looking good at all for Softly's team. Mobile Shields coming out in front trying to protect the point defense. Point defense slowly zapping through all of the Percivals damage potential of the mass falling fast and I think that is going to be the end of it that is going to leave a beautiful mass present right on the doorstep of softly but softly has other issues moving in tech 2 gunships and mass running around the back side of the base those are gonna to try to kill off some mass extractors but ASFR are going to be able to shoot them down strats skirting the edge 
while the ASF were preoccupied. Coming in on the power generator here in between these dukes. There was a duke up, by the way, throwing fire that way. Going to be able to kill one duke. Second one is still online. Strap bombers coming around for another pass. Need two bombs. Coming in and one bomb landing on V. Sadly, that is not going to do it. If they could have landed one more bomb on that power generator, the other duke would be dead. So that duke is going to kill off this Tech 3 air factory and most of the production around it softly was in a bad shape already but it's looking even worse now this is this is this is terrible I think we are watching the wrap up of the game here ACU is hiding in here and this is actually a really good location I love this oh strap bombers no I don't want to see an ACU die to ground fire don't do that um, the reason for hiding the ACU here is because it's actually really hard for torque bombers to hit it there. Um, you have a nice little protection. The torque bombers can only hit you if they are perfectly angled upwards through this gap. Is this going to be game? Question is, is the ACU deep enough? And no, it is not. What happened? The ACU died? Yes. It did. This must have been on Supremacy. The ACU was not actually the game ending target. That is different. And a nuke in the back next to a T3 artillery that's online, but it doesn't kill the T3 artillery. <laughs> oh, Bartok's ACU. Oh, Bartok has quit. Okay, that's what it is. Bartok quit. Yeah, there's not a second ACU. My bad. Okay, so Softly is all on his own now, and he has built the mother of all Tech 1 Air Scout swarms. Not sure what purpose that will serve, but it is traveling across the map. I cannot believe that that was outside the nuke range. That is awesome. Second Duke is back online. Maybe he's hoping that he can control K the T1 Air Scouts over the head of V's ACU and kill it with kill it with crash damage. <laughs> I don't know. I do know that this group of T1 Air Scouts actually hitched my CPU. I have never seen enough Tech 1 Air Scouts on the map at one time to cause a blip. Okay, V Shield is fluctuating because power is down and that's actually really, really, really bad because he's standing between two power generators. So a couple of direct hits from T3 artillery would actually kill that ACU. There's a Maver going up. That is why he's power stalled. He needs to move. He needs to move badly because that is a terrible place to stand. His only uh, salvation is that the Tech 3 artillery is very inaccurate. Here comes the shots. Nope. Going to impact right there. I think the artillery is aimed at that power generator. The Dukes look like they're aimed at this base still and there's Percival's moving in here killing off the last of Softly's precious, precious resources. So far, ah, there's a strap bomber. Strap bomber coming in on the T3 artillery. Softly is going to quit out now that that's dead. And game is won for V and Brian. But of course, since it's a cheating game and the settings are whacked, it's not actually going to, there we go. Everything has been control K'd and that's going to be the end of the game. That was a very interesting game. A lot of stuff happening. Some pretty cool stuff. Can't believe I missed that first T3 artillery coming online. And it looks like they're going to try to build it just for the heck of building it. <laughs> we'll let the game spool onwards for a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, that is co-op one versus one. Pretty cool game mode. Um, if you want to know the quick explanation of how to do it, uh, you turn cheating on in the menu, the alt F2 key combination, when cheating is turned on, brings up the cheat console. You can double click a player name to take his or her point of view, and you can delete and create 
units at will. So basically you can get together with a group of friends, make sure that you trust them because it is going to operate on the honor system. And yeah, you can see what cheating does for you. You can spawn infinite galactic colossuses as, 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 as in the other person's base if you choose to be a complete jerk. But you can have a pretty good time with this kind of game mode if you play honestly. And it basically gives you extra APM and more eyes on the field for a single ACU. I would love it if they had actually played Assassination, but nope, apparently they wanted to do Sandbox. Alrighty, that is going to be the end of this game. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off because I don't know how long these guys play in it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you can see how dominant UAF is in the late game in T3 land. It is really quite terrifying. I'm going to post this up as quick as I can get it out and hopefully I will have another cast before the end of the week. Like I said, if you want to hear what's going on with me, just check out the check-in and I will see you guys in the next cast.